back at it again, and we've got to talk about black people. Yeah. I know Joe Biden would consider me, um, I don't know. I Actually, I don't know what he would consider me, but apparently I'm not black, you know. Because <laughs> I remember he said, if you don't vote for me, then you ain't black. Yeah, huh. Must not be black, I guess. Um, anyway, <laughs> we've got to talk about black people and how Joe's in trouble and Trump is surging once again. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button if you are new. And we got to take a trip to the Bronx. Yeah, New York. Let's dive in. Part of President Trump's re-election strategy is cutting into traditional Democrat strongholds. Shortly after Newsmax found surprising support for the former president in the Bronx, we found out that he was considering doing a rally here. We joined the New York City Young Republican President, Gavin Wax, to find out more. Listen, Kara, make America great again. Uh, it includes the South Bronx, believe it or not. It, it's for all Americans. I think this is why it's great that President Trump wants to visit the South Bronx for some sort of rally. It, it shows that he cares. President Trump and I had been speaking recently about, you know, his prospects in New York, New York City. There was a poll that came out that showed him within the single digits. So we talked a bit about that. I mentioned, uh, you know, the the interviews you did on the street in the South Bronx, where there was a lot of support for President Trump. People were very excited about him. It was something that people hadn't really seen before. It was something new. It was something novel. Free my son, Trump! Free my son, Trump! He went and watched it after our gala. He shared an article uh, commenting on your interviews, and I think it got him very excited. You know, he kind of said, you know, well, let's do a, let's do a rally in the South Bronx. I said, sure, let's let's do it. If President Trump came here to the South Bronx, would you attend the rally? Of course. I would want to meet Trump. I want to shake his hand. He's the only president that I see that can ever make America great again. He's capable of doing that. I would love to go to a rally with Donald Trump come, because I'm a big Donald Trump supporter. Me and too. I will support him 100%. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. Yeah, definitely we're going to show him love. We're going to show him a lot of love. And, yes, sir. you know, like they do in other states. We definitely need to see Trump here. There's nothing but love for Donald Trump here in the South Bronx, the North Bronx, the East Bronx, and the West Bronx. So, you tell we me. Want, we want Trump to come back. Please, bro. Biden, get out of here, bro. I will come to the rally and support Trump. Because the Bronx need a change. And we need somebody that's really going help this community. I would definitely come to a Trump rally in the South Bronx. I like him. You do? Yes. Yes, I will come to a rally if President Trump was to come to the Bronx. And I also would bring other people to come to and support him. Would yes, Joe sir. Biden get a warm reception if he came to the Bronx? No, he wouldn't have. And I'll make sure of that. <laughs> <laughs> Reporting for Newsmax in the South Bronx, New York, I'm Cara Castronova. Yeah, so um, there's one clip. And as I always say with these types of videos, well, before I say that, uh, isn't it wonderful to see the stranglehold that Democrats once had on, you know, us black folks here in America and our voting habits? It has gone down the drain and down the drain fast. It is in the toilet. I, 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 I mean, uh, it, it is incredible to see. Incredible. Trump, South Bronx. There's also another place I would like Trump to go to, and that is uh, a city that unfortunately has been nicknamed after a war zone, and that is Chirac, a.k.a. Chicago. Check it out. How do you justify leaving the amount of people on the streets that are out here? And you're building tents, warm tents, to house 2,000 illegals? I went from tent to tent. Some of these people are veterans. How do you justify people being homeless at this rate? We're seeing increased taxes. We're struggling to pay our mortgages. We're struggling to pay our bills. Um, and we have thousands of dollars every month, millions of dollars, $500 million this year to support foreign nationals. And that's coming out of our pocket. It's going to people from another country, from foreign nationals. Those those countries have to take care of their people. We just don't have the resources. You know, it's nothing against them, but we just don't have it. You know, we're struggling. This is government oppression at its finest. As a veteran myself, I just talked to a veteran in this tent right here. You know, we're seeing people who have given their all to their country and they're just, we just cast them out by the expressway with the trash. This is unconscionable. 
This, and it's unconstitutional. Meanwhile, we have to follow every law. We can't go over the speed limit without getting a ticket sent to our house, but people can violate federal law and we come in and roll out the welcome mat, I give them our home equity, give them our sales taxes. They get the, the best of our schools. Meanwhile, some like 90% of black children are not reading, writing, and doing math at a proficiency, but they do it all under the guise of this fake diversity, equity, and inclusion nonsense. Come on now. Come on now. Talk that talk, brother. Talk that talk. Oh, man. This is so frustrating. And like you said, we have veterans who sacrifice their, in some cases, sacrifice their lives. At minimum, put their life at risk. And they're living in, some of them are living in tents. And yet, <clears throat> we give money to illegals? We have people who simply go over the speed limit. Right? Now, granted, it's breaking the law. And have to pay fines. Some go to jail. And yet we have illegals who break federal law. And like he said, we roll out the red carpet for them. Federal law. But we get hauled off to jail for going over the speed limit or have to pay some fines. Where's the fines for them breaking federal law? Where's jail for them for breaking federal law? They get checks. They get warm beds. Where's our, where, where's our check? Just saying. I'm just saying. We just need to start voting differently. We need to start pulling ourselves out of these government institutions, starting with the public school system. We need to move on from, from big government and from the city of Chicago's political machine. Trump 2024? Trump 2024. This is taken away from American citizens. American children who are already struggling uh, academically. You're going to bring and bring in a new group of children, a new group of people, take those resources away from Americans to accommodate this new group of people, that is gonna make, the children gonna fall, fall further behind. Unemployment is going through the roof. Poverty, crime, this is going to impact our communities across this city to the point to where violence, murder, robbery is gonna spike. Not just with Americans, but also with these people uh, coming here. 3,000 illegal immigrants are living in this factory, almost, what, what, a half a block long? And this is going to transcend into public housing. Uh, they keep saying that there will be no public housing for illegal immigrants. That's not true. So we pay to be homeless, basically, now as United States citizens. We're going to flip Chicago red. The Democratic Party is done in Chicago, and that's a fact. By summer, you think it's a lot of them coming in. You watch the uprising of red in Chicago. And we say, President Trump, come here and we'll walk you all through this city and you don't have to worry about a protest. We send a message to the Democratic Party, Trump 2024, make no mistake about it. Trump 2024. Make no mistake about it. Yes, sir, brother. Yes, sir. Now, uh, I definitely think Trump should visit Chicago. He should take him up on that offer. Now, uh, <laughs> Uh, that obviously Chicago is a very, very dangerous city. Uh, you could be caught with a stray at any moment. Okay. Um, so he's going to have to be heavily protected, <laughs> not because they'd be protesting against them, but Chicago's just dangerous, man. This the, hey, the, the, the streets get real. Okay. They get real, <laughs> but I definitely think he should, uh, take a trip to Chicago because Chicagoans are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They, they, they are they are sick of being uh, the, the first ones to uh, put Democrats in position to help and the last ones that Democrats actually help. They're tired of it. And here's another clip. Check it out. I am anti-immigrant, illegal, call ice, send them all back, waiting across the Rio Grande for, and, and don't uh, obey our immigration and naturalization law. And to see another group come over here, it's disgraceful. It is un-American. And these rules that you have, the rule, who made these rules? When did our ultimate vote for these rules? When did the people have time to 
to participate in making these rules. And one of you all came over to me, Mr. Blakemore, we got little children. What about the black children in the ghetto? We got to make a future for them. These others will move them out. Move us out and they come in to compete with jobs, goods, and contracts and service. A historian called Addison say that they have a negative effect on the black community. I'm strictly advocating for black people and call ice on them. Trump, come in here. Clean this mess up. The most corrupt city in the United States is the city of Chicago. And that's not my... Thank you, Mr. Blakemore, for your comments. Did you catch that last part? He said, Trump, come in here and clean this mess up. The most corrupt, secu- the, the most corrupt city. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Democrats have royally messed up, man. They have royally messed up. They have woken up a sleeping giant. <clears throat> They've woken up a sleeping giant. They've woken up black people to uh, the actual truth of how Democrats really feel about you know us. They've woken them up. A lot of black folks that were sleepwalking and voting Democrat and, you know, Democrat, Democrat, Democrat. It was strictly Democrat up and down the board. They've woken a lot of black people up. And, uh, you know, a lot of us have seen the truth, realized the truth. And you heard a couple clips there. Trump 24. Trump 24. Hey, took us a while. Took us a while. Hey, we, hey, listen, I know we came late to the party, but you know that old saying. Better late than never, right? Better late than never. They've also wrote, woken up a group of individuals, and I touched on this just the other day, a group of individuals who just didn't really participate, right? Didn't really care to really get involved in politics a whole lot. Didn't really vote for anybody in 2020. A lot of those individuals have come out and said, no, I'm participating, and I'm voting for Trump. I'm voting for Trump. He's even flipped the young people to vote for Trump. Like, could you have imagined seeing that young people, a majority of young folks saying they would support Donald Trump? Crazy, right? Crazy, crazy. <clears throat> and, um, you know, just, just individuals in general who were kind of middling individuals, maybe moderate Democrats who have just said, you know what, this, this is total BS. What is happening is absolutely insane. This is crazy. I'm, I, I have to support Trump. There's there's no other if ands, or buts about it. I have to support Trump because, you know, they were talking about, you know, a lot of these polls and how, you know, um, uh, 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 you know, Trump supporters increase their support for Trump, you know, with all the indictments. And I'm like, those weren't Trump supporters. Those were not Trump supporters that when, when whenever you, you whenever they hit him with another indictment and his poll numbers went up, those weren't MAGA. That's not MAGA. MAGA never left. We were all we were always there. Trump always had a floor that he never dropped below. Okay, that's MAGA. The people that made those polls go up, those were your voters. That was your base. That was the Democrats that used to vote for all of you to keep you in office. They jump. They joined the Trump train because they see what you're doing. They understand what's happening. That it's not Trump that's the threat to democracy. It's actually you, you Democrats, that are the threat to democracy. They see what's happening. They see it. That wasn't that wasn't MAGA. <laughs> what? That doesn't even make sense. When you just stop and think about it, that doesn't even make sense. So MAGA, people that already support Trump, all of a sudden said that they're going to vote for Trump we, we were already supporting Trump what are you talking about <laughs> those were your voters I know you don't want to admit it see that's the thing they don't want to admit it they don't want to say it out loud that they've lost their base <laughs> hey man all I got to say is uh Trump 24 Trump 24 and uh I think uh most of America agrees Y'all let me know your thoughts, your opinions in the comment section below. Like, share, comment, and hit that subscribe button before you go. Peace and love. I'm out.